my name is Marsha, I'm the blonde from Coding Blonde and today I want to talk about the health tech space. In particular about the innovations that are happening when it comes to accessibility to healthcare for patients who might be living in remote places, for example in rural areas. And to also introduce you to the field of telehealth. But first I'd like to thank Providence St. Joseph Health for sponsoring this video. They're doing so much in the area of health tech and innovation and are making healthcare more accessible. If you'd like to find out more about Providence St. Joseph Health and about telehealth in particular, I'll leave the links in the description. So scroll down and find them and learn more about them. Those of us who live in cities don't understand the luxury that we experience in having healthcare services available to us when we need them. Yes, you might not be able to walk to a hospital from your home, but even a 30 minute drive can't compare with what some of the people that live in rural areas have to go through to access healthcare. Some people need to travel hours, if not days, to get medical assistance which means that there are huge barriers for people who live in rural areas to get medical help when they need it. These barriers may include the cost of travel, the time that it takes to travel, the time that you have to take off work to go and get some medical assistance, and also the lack of a reliable transportation system. And what if you need urgent help? This is where technologies like telehealth come in. Using this technology, Providence St. Joseph Health is making specialized medical assistance accessible for people who live in rural areas. They have over 10 years of experience in this field and provide over 40 specialized services with their telehealth technologies, including Telestroke, which provides medical assistance, specialized medical assistance, for people who have just suffered from a stroke. Speaking of needing urgent help. And in 2018 alone, they've had over 39,000 encounters with patients. So I have interviewed Dr. Todd Satorsky, who's the Chief Executive at Telehealth and Chief Medical Technology Officer for Providence St. Joseph Health, to tell us more about this technology and about its potential impact on the health industry. Hi, Dr. Satorsky. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to talk about um, all the innovations that you have been doing in the tech space. So let's jump straight into it. What is telehealth and telestrokes? What do they do and how do they work? Yeah, so telehealth is sort of a broad category. People define it different ways. Uh, at Providence St. Joseph Health, we, we define it as um, uh, digitally enabled visits and um, virtual visits using uh, technology to see patients face to face uh, on, on camera, kind of like what we're doing right now. Uh, only we have to do it and make sure that it's HIPAA compliant and secure and safe and uh, all of those things since we're uh, delivering healthcare that way. And um, I mean, it sounds really, really cool because I'm sure it's very great for patients that are in uh, remote places. But, you know, these are some of the benefits that just com come to mind to me. But you're working in that space. What benefits does this technology have for patients and pro what problems does it, does it solve? Yeah, actually, you're spot on. Um, access is a big problem. And so, um, you know, we, we have a large shortage of providers, uh, especially physicians in, in the U.S. And, um, uh, and particularly in some rural areas and underserved areas, uh, we just don't have access to specialists. And so uh, when you asked about telestroke, that's one of the areas that um, we've invested a lot in and we've grown a telestroke network that allows us to take um, specialists, in particular stroke specialists or vascular neurologists, and um, beam them in to over 100 sites um, 24 hours a day and they can respond very quickly and talk to the ER physician, assess the patient uh, who seems to be having stroke-like symptoms and when appropriate give uh, clot busting medicines to help uh, stop the stroke and help the patient recover. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's making this kind of healthcare accessible for remote places and, and that's wonderful. I mean, we think about technology revolutionizing the way we work, right? And being able to work from anywhere, but when it's revolutionizing health, 
that's even that's even better. So what do you think, what impact do you think technologies like telehealth and telestroke will have for um, the healthcare industry? Well, think? yeah, I, I think, I think in terms of the digital revolution and, and moving more towards um, uh, digital uh, solutions, healthcare is clearly, I think uh, not much uh, debate about this, clearly behind um, uh, the airline industry and banking and, and um, pretty much almost every other type of industry has been uh, transformed by um, our tablets and our smartphones and, and the internet and, and um, uh, texting, uh, et cetera, um, and AI um, and, and machine learning. So um, healthcare is kind of just getting started on that journey. And I think there's a variety of reasons why uh, it's taken us longer. I think um, I think providers are resistant to change. Uh, I think that it, it, what we've seen is that uh, patients and consumers are driving it um, much more. Uh, they're the ones that are used to using their, you know, their device for uh, basically everything, and um, and they're demanding that for healthcare too. And so um, that's a that's a big driving force. Uh, others are or things are, uh, other limitations or challenges around. Um, reimbursement and regulations. Really, our healthcare system wasn't built um, for this type of technology, and the technology has moved much faster than uh, I would say our laws and regulations have been able to keep up with. And so um, alignment of that, I think, will allow us to do even more. And again, uh, the way we look at it is if we're going to stand up a new service or a new product that uses technology or connect technology enabled care delivery, we look at it first from, is it safe? Uh, can this be done safely? Does it uh, add quality? Is it, is it a high quality service? And does it uh, provide at least as good a care as you could get in person, if not better? And then um, is there a financial impact to it? Is it, can we afford to do it, right? Because sometimes you add technology and it just adds costs. And, and, in, and in our country, we're spending a lot of money, 3.3 trillion on, on healthcare. And, and so hopefully technology can help lower that cost and make care more efficient. Um, and then finally, you have to get buy-in from the providers themselves. The, the physicians and allied health professionals who are going to be using it really have to believe in it and, and want to do it uh, because it's different than how we were trained in medical school. Uh, up to date, uh, we really haven't had a lot of uh, training in this space, and that's another area we'll probably need to change if we really want to see wide-scale adoption. I can see, yeah, a lot of challenges, but also a lot of opportunities, right? Yeah, for it's, sure. It's an industry that hasn't been as disrupted, like you said. So in your opinion, what is the future of health tech? What would it look like in a few years uh, time or, I don't know, 50 years time? What, what are your predictions? Well, in a few years, I think we'll continue to see increased uptick of uh, adoption of virtual visits and in, in telehealth and telemedicine. And that'll be, um, we've seen doubling of our visits year over year for the last several years. And so I think that trend will continue. Um, and I think you'll see more remote care, more um, home monitoring, moving care out of hospitals and facilities into the, into the home or into alternative care uh, settings. I think that's a big trend that we're seeing right now. And again, a lot of that's driven by, you know, cost. It's just very expensive to be in the hospital. And so trying to find alternative ways of caring for our population and doing so in a cost-effective way, uh, but also in a, in a safe way. Um, and then I think you know, people talk a lot about AI, and I do think that, that that will play a role. My personal opinion is that in the immediate future, the near term, that role will largely be driving uh, efficiencies of processes. So it's not going to replace doctors initially. Um, it may never ultimately replace doctors, but it's going to be a tool that hopefully allows providers to do, um, to provide care more efficiently and um, augment um, um, what they, what they know and what, what their experience is just because there's so much out there and it's, it's impossible for one uh, physician to, to, to know everything. And so it, it is kind of a, um, both a knowledge um, augmentation and then also um, a process efficiencies and, and you know, being able to uh, pull together a patient's um, lab results and, and, and studies and, um, and meds and, and what's going on with them now and their symptoms and things, pulling all that together and kind of um, helping the provider to, to make sense of it. 
That's amazing. Um, I remember I visited an exhibition in, um, in a museum in London. I don't remember what it was called, but it had um, the first AI machines and it was very basic and it had um, some sort of a diagnostic uh, mechanism. And I, can, I can't even imagine how far, with current technology, how far that um, can go. But I guess diversity is also key because treating different patients and seeing those things and getting data from them is also very important. Yeah, huge opportunities. I, I think we're just getting started, uh, frankly. I mean, it's, it's um, and again, one of those things where regulations and, and kind of the, the, the healthcare system is, is maybe not ready for it, but I, I do think it'll be a, a very disruptive force, probably uh, even more so than, than virtual visits and telehealth. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time and for that wonderful explanation. I can't wait to publish this video and share the power of telehealth and telestroke network and also just plant that seed that um, in, my, in the head of my um, viewers that there's so many innovations coming in the tech space and in the health space and I'm sure that uh, a lot of people would like to get involved with that. Yeah, cool. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. It was nice to chat with you. Take care. Very nice to chat with you as well. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Dr. Satorsky, for your insights in the field. It's exciting to see how many opportunities there are in the health tech space, and it's amazing what you're doing with the telehealth technology in particular. Everybody should have access to medical assistance when they need it. So I'm very excited to see that this technology is disrupting the current system and is helping a lot of people who live in rural areas to get access to qualified medical help on time. If you'd like to learn more about telehealth, I'll leave a link in my description so you can go and check it out right now. Again, thank you Providence St. Joseph Health for sponsoring this video and for making technologies like this one a reality. I'm very excited to see all of the innovations in the health tech space that you're working on. So have you guys heard of telehealth before? Let me know in the comments. And also what interests you about the health tech space? If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you like it leave a comment, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel and find me on other social media as Coding Blonde. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.